Hmm? So thank you so much for listening into this webinar. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our asset ACD440, which is a novel trip V1 antagonist, so that's capsaicin antagonist in neuropathic and nociceptive pain. As you may be aware that there is an opioid crisis in the US. And there was recently uh, in September this year, a, a an editorial written by Professor Clifford Wood from Harvard Medical School, uh, also stressing this, and uh, what do we need instead? Well, there is no one size fits all because there's a number of different pain diseases. They're all different. They have different characteristics. And the same drug, of course, cannot be used to treat all of them. And we need not only phenotyping tools so we know who to treat, but we also need specific treatments to address the specific ailments in the different pain indications. So neuropathic pain is a long lasting pain that is due to a disease or injury to nerve tissue. For instance, post repetitive neuralgia, painful diabetic polyneuropathy or pain after chemotherapy or even after an injury or surgery. Neuropathic pain affects seven to 8% of the general population, which is a fairly large number and people are rarely aware of this. Uh, and what's also troublesome is that 80% of patients are not satisfied with treatment. In general, neuropathic pain is more severe than non-neuropathic non pain. So for instance, uh, nociceptive pain, and is also associated with wor worse health compared to non-neuropathic pain. And this, of course, has a major impact on quality of life, including then rating as for the de depression, uh, rating as bad as coronary artery disease or poorly controlled diabetes. Patients often describe their symptoms as walking on pins or walking on coals on fire, which tells you a little bit about the intensity and constant uh, sense of pain. I would just like to give you a short example. So the back here is of a gentleman who is uh, very was a very prominent person in the finance business, and he had post herpetic neuralgia, and he was so badly off that he asked his physician actually to cut this painful skin out. So on the cartoon to the left, you can see what normal skin would look like uh, with a skin biopsy from a healthy area, but comparing then to his pain area, which this other right-hand cartoon is from, you can see that there's fibers going up close to the skin, and these contain TRPV1 fibers, so TRPV1 receptors. So they are sensitive to different types of, of pain conditions, for instance, uh, heat and other temperature sensations. In peripheral neuropathic pain, we know that TRPV1 receptors are upregulated and they do become more superficially located in the skin. ACD440, uh, we have developed that as a topical gel formulation because it gives a low systemic exposure. Uh, it's very suitable for a topical administration to any body area except for the eye, which you need to be very sensitive for. Uh, it has good properties for use, so it's fast drying, it doesn't stick, it doesn't stain, and it's easy to administer by patients. It has a good shelf life, that it means that you can actually use it for quite some time, a couple of years, uh, without changing the, the uh, package. Um, it's a good treatment option for neuropathic pain from a practical perspective, also in primary care which is not always the case for the other types of, of local treatments. And we do have a patent application submitted for the ACD440 gel formulation. If you want to target peripheral neuropathic pain, you need also to look at subgroups of patients. And I mentioned uh, phenotypes uh, in my very beginning of this talk. So only one in five has sufficient pain relief with existing products. And the target indication for us is the patients who have increased sensitivity to actually to sensory stimulation. So for instance, cold or heat. Uh, these problems may sound minor, uh, but these are major problems in everyday life for these patients. Wind, draft of the wind can be very painful, for instance, or taking a shower because it's hot. Uh, here you can see a 
cartoon where neuropathic pain can actually be subdivided into different groups. So one has only hypoesthesia, that it means they don't really feel, but they feel pain. They can't feel that you touch, but that means that there's basically no fibers telling you, sensory fibers telling you that there is something there. And the rest, which is two thirds of the patient or a little, little less than, little more than half, uh, they have increased sensitivity to heat or cold. So that's thermal hyperalgesia, or they have a so-called mechanical hyperalgesia, which is much more common in diabetic, painful diabetic polyneuropathy. So about 4% doing the math from the numbers, uh, the general 4% of the general population actually suffer uh, from chronic peripheral neuropathic pain with any type of sensory hypersensitivity. The upregulator, uh, upregulated trip through one receptors can actually be present in all etiologies, but you have to have the nerve fibers at the end in the skin for this to be of practical importance. And 2.3% of the general population then suffer chronic peripheral neuropathic pain with thermal hypersensitivity. One example of these patients with having a very high uh, representation of trip V1 receptors in the skin are patients with post herpetic neuralgia, like the gentleman I just showed you. In With 440, we have uh, demonstrated efficacy in a phase 1B study, that means in healthy volunteers. Uh, we exposed them to the gel, and we had a very strong efficacy profile. Um, we had a highly significant analgesic effect on so-called laser evoked pain. It's like a very short stinging pain where the pain intensity was about 50% of in the treatment uh, subjects versus the placebo-treated ones. And the mechanical sensitivity was also uh, decreased, so pain on, on mechanical sensitivity. Uh, we had a very long duration of action. We only applied the gel for an hour. Then we had to take it off to do our assessments, and it still had a long duration of action of 9 to 11 hours. The models we used are very well validated and have been used with many, many marketed compounds. So we are very well on par with these or, equal, or actually better than competitor compounds. We have a very good safety profile. Uh, in the beginning of... The, uh, this century, uh, many companies tried to develop uh, TRIP-V1 antagonists for treatment, but we treated, companies treated the whole body. Uh, so we take it systemically and you will, of course, treat all TRIP-V1 receptors in the body. Uh, but if you give it locally, then you will have no systemic effects. You will only, and, but we didn't also did have an, any local adverse effects. We had a very, very low systemic exposure to the gel. We have a 500-fold margin to systemic exposure, giving any type of V1 antagonistic effect, which is quite amazing. Uh, we, this indicates a potential in nociceptive pain also. Not only neuropathic pain, but this specific study actually indicates the potential in local nociceptive pain, such as burn injury or shingles pain, for instance. We then continued to a phase two trial in patients with peripheral neuropathic pain with hypersensitivity. As I mentioned, they have increased sensitivity to uh, skin stimulation. We had positive feedback from the FDA uh, based on our pre-IND submission uh, supporting us conducting this trial. And we conducted a randomized crossover placebo double-blind phase two clinical trial in 14 patients, so seven of them first had ACD440 and then switched over to placebo for one week. And the seven patients did it the other way around. In the patients who actually uh, demonstrated thermal hyperalgesia, that is 40 degrees centigrade of heat. That means normally you would feel that's say lukewarm. It's like a normal hot shower that evoked pain in these patients. Uh, and if the uh, this pain was reduced by about 50% in patients who received, when they received ACD440, but not when receiving placebo. So as you can see on this uh, cartoon to the to the right, 
you can see that the placebo patients remained pretty much with their intention, the uh, initial pain intensity, while patients receiving ACD440 actually had a reduction in pain uh, about uh, steps of, from th uh, reduction of three steps on the zero to 10 scale, which is clearly clinically significant. Now, which were these patients? Who were they? Well, they were actually patients who did have a representation of the receptor in the skin. So this is a specific phenotype uh, where we can say that we can tailor the treatment because we can identify already before the trial that these are the patients who are likely to respond. And this actually turned out to be true uh, by, by the results of this trial. So what are the advantages with a topical pain treatment? Of course, peripheral neuropathic pain becomes more common with higher age. Uh, it also increases with a sedentary lifestyle and obesity because they're also linked to lifestyle diseases. With increasing age, people also commonly have many co comorbid diseases, cardiovascular, diabetes, and they take several different medications. Most prescribed treatments have side effects involving the CNS. They get dizzy, they have balance problems, they have cognitive problems, they can be drowsy, sedated, it affects their ability to drive cars, to run heavy machinery. For instance, if you work in, in a factory, you need to run heavy machinery, you have a work injury. It's, it's really a conflict, whether you should continue working or you should uh, work, so work with pain or stop working because you cannot work with your treatment. There's also a high risk for drug interactions, increasing these problems. So due to its topical formulation, ACD440 gel has no drug interactions because this basically doesn't uh, give you enough drug exposure in the blood to give interactions. And it can also be used together with other drugs due to the same reason and can thus, thus be a complementary treatment to other pain treatments. The topic or the topic and the idea of trip v one receptor antagonists is actually clinically validated. Novartis had a trip v one receptor, uh, SAF3112, uh, which was reformulated from an oral formulation into a topical formulation as eye drops. And it was is, is under development for ocular pain. It's been used in post-operative pain after laser corrective surgery or cataract surgery. You can see the data down here to the right where there's a, a uh, significant reduction in pain. And then they conducted a phase 2B study in chronic eye pain, completed almost a year ago, so 10, 9, 10 months ago. And after that, they closed the deal with Bosch & Long worth 175 billion US dollars in upfront payment and a total deal value of 2.5 billion USD US dollars. So, and that deal uh, was to a great extent, including the SAF 3112. So summarizing, um, the ACD440 gel has demonstrated proof of mechanism by reducing temperature evoked pain in healthy volunteers and in patients at a clinically relevant magnitude, which means that it could be used for treating acute nociceptive pain as in the phase 1B study in peripheral neuropathic pain with hypersensitivity as in the phase 2A study. It's also safe, it has a minimal risk for CNS or other systemic side effects, and it can be used safely together with other analgesics and drugs co commonly used to treat other comorbidities. It's easy to predict treatment responders, so you don't have to use a trial and error paradigm. You can actually base your treatment selection on the bedside phenotype testing by just provoking patients with uh, something that is lukewarm in the doctor's sense. You can expect a short time to onset and have a twice daily dosing without pain uh, breakthrough. And it's easy for patients to self-administer. So trip v one receptor antagonism is a clinically validated target mechanism as also demonstrated by Novartis in their phase two studies. And currently we are at AltSecure, we're planning to, for the next clinical trial in phase two with our compound ACD440. So thank you so much for listening.